the pressures that are building around the Suez Canal, I mean, it's hard not to imagine that this is going to translate into higher levels of inflation, especially since we live in a world where supply chains have been optimized. Everything arrives and happens just in time. Right, Yusuf. And uh, I would say, as mentioned, there are many mitigating factors, but I would add that uh, one aspect or one angle of this uh, developing story that hasn't been touched upon is that uh, it really does highlight the the risk of global trade, just how vulnerable uh, global trade is to geopolitical disruption. Now it's going to leave those economies uh, that are most vulnerable to such disruption, uh, particularly with regards to food and other strategic resources, uh, really looking at ways about uh, around how to secure uh, that supply chain or that part of the supply chain going forward. And that can only mean uh, much higher geopolitical tension going forward. So at what point does this become an issue for markets outside of, let's say, some of the commodity plays? Uh, what is the thinking at Manulife Investment? But we have seen uh, ships running aground before in history. There, there is precedent, and it has taken anywhere from a few hours. And, of course, now we are running into uh, a day-long event here, and uh, we're really monitoring the, the situation closely. Uh, let's see how uh, quickly uh, that ship can get uh, uh, dislodged uh, from, from the canal or uh, from the, the blockage, and uh, we'll have to uh, you know, monitor it very closely in the next few hours, as you say. Does it make sense to you that you've got the likes of uh, Mr. Kaplan and Mr. Bostick wanting sort of, quote, hikes in the future? There certainly does uh, seem to be a revealed uh, bifurcation on the uh, Federal Reserve at the moment as to uh, where policy goes next. Powell is uh, probably the dovish, most dovish of them all. Uh, and I think uh, the key really is that uh, he can be as dovish as he likes, but the market isn't really buying it uh, literally. So key to watch is really what happens with real yields. And you've seen a, a slow creep higher in recent months there. It's lately been stuck in a range of minus uh, 60 to minus 80 basis points. And the fact that it hasn't managed to break out sustainably is uh, somewhat supportive of risk assets at the margin. However, we are seeing uh, volatility being normalized across most asset markets at uh, much higher levels. And that is a key risk to watch going forward. I would really take it back to the fact that global money supply or global liquidity growth has been contracting uh, since July of last year. That's corresponded uh, with emerging market equities are really struggling to push higher given emerging markets are most uh, in need of their yeah. global uh, dollar liquidity. Uh, and that uh, really needs to turn around to, to give our risk markets a, a lift from here. So the IHS market PMIs, those caught my attention. Uh, they basically saw a rise to a record, specifically in the paid price component. Uh, that underscores some of the concerns and the trepidation around inflation. So you can understand that particular point of view. Uh, are current levels of U.S. Treasury yields really an indication then of confidence in the economic rebound, which is what Mr. Powell is asserting? We see that a lot of the inflation pressures uh, are cost push in nature as opposed to demand pull. Uh, and certainly on that front, there have been uh, developments in recent days uh, that uh, do uh, cause us concern on the demand front. Uh, you can see that COVID uh, appears to be uh, surging anew in, in many places uh, in the US, for instance, while the vaccine has been successful uh, in the early stages, uh, COVID cases on a daily basis are leveling off at a very elevated level. In fact, daily changes are on the rise again. If you look closer to our region in Asia, India, uh, again, uh, quite successful with its vaccine rollout. In fact, it controls a lot of the production, uh, is seeing uh, somewhat of a, a renewed wave of COVID as well. So uh, this uh, certainly is a downside risk that the reflation narrative uh, has, has not really incorporated. So how does that change uh, make a difference then to your current investment strategy in U.S. assets. We'll get to your view on uh, Asia in a moment. 
Well, it's really a relative story. Our uh, strategic portfolios uh, are overweight. Uh, the US, we also like uh, emerging market equity and emerging market debt. Uh, that's really uh, underpinned by a view that uh, sovereign yields, particularly those in developed markets, are going to be anemic going forward. So there are still opportunities. Uh, within the United States, we see uh, demand for tech as uh, secular in nature. That's, uh, uh, you know, we've heard about the commodity super cycle. We are in a tech super cycle, uh, and that is going to be, uh, you know, a huge tailwind there uh, for that sector.